Hello and welcome to this act of worship. Our call to worship is a prayer. O oh God, you summon the day to dawn. You teach the morning to waken the earth. For you, the valleys will sing for joy. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. To you, the monarchs of earth shall bow down. The poor and the persecuted shall shout for joy. Your love and justice shall last forever, fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise. Great is your name, great is your love. Amen. And we sing, Be Thou My Vision.
Let us pray. From before the world began and after the end of eternity, you are God. From the sea bursting from its womb to the wind ceasing from its chase, you are God. In the vastness of the universe and the forgotten corners of our hearts, you are God. You are our God and we bless you. Because the world is beautiful and beauty is a tender thing, we are caretakers of creation. We need you, God. Because human knowledge seems endless, the world is our oyster and we do not know what we do not know. So we need you, God. Because we can live without you and are free to go against you and could worship our wisdom alone, we need you, our God. Because you came among us and sat beside us and heard us speak and saw us ignore you and healed our pain and let us wound you and loved us to the end and triumphed over all our hatred. We need you, God, because you, not we, are God. So we need you. Listen for what God who created us says. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious to me. I love you. I honour you. I am with you. So we respond. Maker of all, we are your children, the creatures of your kindness, the bearers of your image. This day we will walk by your light and follow your son and live by your spirit. This day we will not offer to you offerings that cost us nothing. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The authority of Jesus questioned. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? they asked. And who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The parable of the two sons. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. 
But John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The events of this morning's reading take place on the morning after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem with his disciples. After arriving the day before, Jesus headed straight to the temple where he turned over the tables of the moneylenders and cleared the temple of all who were buying and selling there. He even called the temple a den of robbers. Well, this was not going to go unnoticed. In fact, it wasn't meant to. Neither was it going to please the chief priests and the elders. But then it wasn't meant to. So when Jesus returned to the temple the next day, he must have expected some comeback. And sure enough, as we heard in the reading, the chief priests and the elders confronted him. They asked whose authority he had to act and to speak as he does. And this is a reasonable enough question. We know who Jesus is, but they didn't and they were trying to work it out. But rather than answering their question, Jesus asks another question to them. Jesus doesn't jump to their tune. He doesn't feel that he needs to justify himself to them, just as Jesus doesn't jump to our tune either. Jesus then intertwines his story with that of John the Baptist's. The chief priests and elders, of course, hadn't recognised who John was either, or where John's authority came from. The temple, of course, had its culture, its way of operating, and it worked well for the chief priests and elders, so they really didn't want it to change. They certainly didn't want changes being made and taught by this nobody from Nazareth. We can easily point the finger at them and criticise them for this. But then all of our churches have their cultures too. The way things work, the way things are always done. Each church, even within the same denomination, is different in so many ways. I wonder how often we resist change within our church change to the order of service perhaps, change to a hymn tune, change to the layout of the chairs. How often do we especially resist change if it is suggested by someone much younger than us or somebody much newer to the church? Perhaps those of us who have been there a long time feel that that in itself gives us authority over others, when perhaps it is the other who holds the word of God for us at this time. Well, Jesus goes on to tell the parable of the two sons. What do we make of this parable? One son tells his father that he won't go and work in the vineyard, but later changes his mind and goes. The other son tells his father that he will go, but then doesn't. Jesus asks the chief priests and elders, which one does the will of the father? They answer the one who actually does what the father asks, even though he initially refused. This seems like the correct answer, doesn't it? I guess we would all agree with this. The thing about Jesus's parables is, that they aren't usually looking for a correct answer. They're usually designed for the hearer, who is listening carefully, to think about the story in terms of themselves. Parables are aimed at the transformation of the hearer, rather than for the hearer to congratulate themselves on getting the right answer. 
The story is told of the minister who preached a sermon against being judgmental. On the way out, one of the congregation stopped and congratulated the minister on the sermon and added, I only hope that Mrs. Jones was listening. It is easy to interpret parables as lessons to others and not to hear what they're saying to us. But we do forget that when we point the finger at someone, three fingers are pointing back at us. So this parable of the two sons isn't about us deciding who is in and who is out, who is right and who is wrong. That really never is our place anyway. It's about recognising which of the sons we are. To what extent do we do the will of the Father, that is God? To what extent do our actions match our words? Do we make a profession of faith, but then not follow it up with the relevant action? And of course, the point of this self-examination through the parable isn't so that we feel condemned, bowed down beyond redemption. The point is that in applying it to ourselves and seeing where we fall short leads to change, to transformation within ourselves. Repentance, which leads to beginning again with a clean sheet and a step closer to where God would have us be. So Jesus gives this picture at the end of the tax collectors and prostitutes going ahead of the chief priests and elders into the kingdom of God. The chief priests and elders were at the top extreme of the Jewish social and religious hierarchy. And the tax collectors and prostitutes were at the very bottom. And yet in the kingdom, at least, those who are the least, who recognise Jesus and do God's will, go ahead of all of those who all say the right things, who have the trappings of religious power, but who don't seem to know God and God's will at all. So what of you and me today? Could we be so busy defending how things are and holding off any change that we are missing God's leading for us at this time? Could we be so busy working out who is in and who is out that we have missed the fact that all, all are invited in? Could we be so busy seeing how Jesus' teaching shows up faults in others that we miss the opportunity that they offer to us for us to be transformed? Could we be settling for picking over the minutiae and be missing the most glorious bigger picture of God and life in the kingdom? If so, then let's change our minds. Let's turn to God and let's be transformed. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we cannot escape you, nor will we resist you. For though your ways are not our ways, nor are your thoughts our thoughts, it is on your word and will that all life depends. You convert wrong into right, therefore we trust you, and so we pray, God of justice, show yourself. Where the hungry go unfed, while the privileged gorge themselves. Where the poor go begging, while the rich amass greater fortunes. Where tyrants have bitten the dust, but their successors prove no better. God of justice, show yourself. 
where the prisoner is not prepared for freedom and the refugee is not accorded dignity, where those who are disadvantaged are excluded and those who are disabled are left on the margins, where gender, race or religion are grounds for suspicion or confer unmerited privilege. God of justice, show yourself. To those who speak for the voiceless and defend the persecuted, to those who protest for a fairer world and practice simple living, to those who share their faith in Jesus in places where faith is suspected. God of justice, show yourself. At this new stage in the pandemic, with the new measures that have been brought in by the government, we pray, Lord, that you will give wisdom and guidance to all who have the power to make decisions and that you will help and protect those for whom the measures are difficult. God of justice, show yourself. And to us that we might serve and love you with body, soul and mind. God of justice, show yourself. God, hear our prayer and make us willing agents of your gracious purposes. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing together. Hear the call of the kingdom. Christ comes preaching the good news of the kingdom and calls us to follow him. Let's sing together, hear the call of the kingdom.
and now a blessing. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead us on. From the fam familiarity of what we know to the wonder of what you will, will reveal, Jesus, now lead us on. To transform the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead us on. Because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead us on. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen.